Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about a Lorentz curve. Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at the Lorentz curve and how to construct that in practice. What we have here is a diagram showing the cumulative percentage of income on the y-axis and the cumulative percentage of households in a country on the x-axis. The Lorentz curve shows the relationship between both of them and what we have over on the right hand side over here is the income distribution data for Ireland looking at both households and the income level of these different distribution of households. So to construct the Lorentz curve what we do first is we look at the percentage of households and the percentage of households goes up here in our diagram in 10% increments, which we call deciles, from zero up to 10%, 10 to 20, and so on, up to 100%. We also have cumulative percentage of income that on the y-axis that goes from zero up to 10%, 20, 30, and so on, so these are also in deciles. For perfect equality, what we would see is that the first 10% of households measured by income uh, hold 10% of the wealth. So we would have a point on our absolute equality line with 10% of households holding 10% of income. And as we moved up to 20% of the households, what we would see is that they hold also 20% of the wealth. So equal proportions as we go along. 30% uh, of households, finally, would hold 30% of the wealth so equal distribution each way and that gives us points on our line of absolute equality. So what we would say here is if we continue this on absolute equality all the way up to the top here what we would see is we would have a line of absolute equality and we can fill in our diagram here quite easily. What we can say is at 100% in terms of income that would show 100% of households attaining this level. So we can close off our box here in this case. Okay, so we have our Lorentz curve, and as we mentioned, we have here our line of absolute equality. So that is absolute equality here. Now, what we know in practice, however, is that there's no country that has absolute equality. There's no country where income is spread out perfectly evenly amongst households. Normally, it uh, differentiates itself from this. So what we have over on the right-hand side is household percentage and income percentage held by those. And this is data for Ireland for 2016. So with zero households, we have a zero income level. So we have a starting point in our graph. 20% of households measured by income, the first 20% or poorest 20%, hold 12% of the income. So we can put in our point here, 20% of households hold 12% of the income in Ireland. So we're moving up along our 20% line and we're coming across here to 12%. So we have a second point on our Lawrence curve here. 40% of our households in Ireland hold 21% of the wealth. So 40% of households here hold 21%. So roughly this point here, come across and 21%. So we have a third point in our Lawrence curve for Ireland. 60% hold 38% of the wealth. So 60% over here are holding 38%, roughly this point, and we can bring that over to show it in terms of income distribution. So that is 38. So at 60%, what we see is 38% of the income is held by this group. And if we come up to our point here, we get roughly 38% in terms of household income held. Next point is 80%, so at 80% what we see is 61% of income is held. So again, we'll come up along here and we are coming to 61%. So roughly this point and we come across 
to 61%. And we know for our final point, 100% of the population must hold, by definition, 100% of the wealth. So we have our end point up top here of the box. So our Lawrence curve in that case for Ireland is quite bold. And we join up our dots here. So our Lawrence curve in the Irish case is quite bold. We will start off at the bottom left hand corner and we join up the dots of our Lawrence curve here and we come up to our end point. So what we've drawn in this case is the actual Lawrence curve for Ireland. So we have Lawrence curve here and this is the red line in our case. And it's based on a distribution of income data. What you can see is that there's a gap between the line of absolute equality and the Lorentz curve. And the greater this gap is, the greater the level of inequality of income distribution in a country. We can also measure this. We can measure it with a once-off uh, coefficient, which we call the Gini coefficient. So the Gini coefficient in the Irish case uh, would be measured as follows. So coefficient is based on this formula where everything between the line of absolute equality and the Lorentz curve, let's call that A, can be compared to everything between the Lorentz curve and the rest of the diagram, this area B here. The Gini coefficient, how to work it out is area A divided by area A plus B. And the figures you work out will uh, be between zero, which is perfect equality, all the way up to one, which is perfect inequality. And every country will come somewhere between these two absolute points. For example, in the case of Ireland, our Gini coefficient is 0 0.30. Uh, which is relatively low in a European perspective and a global perspective. If we compare it to, for example, the UK, what we will see is in the UK, what you have is a Gini coefficient of 0.35. In the case of the US, the Gini coefficient is 0.39. So for the US case, if we compare it to an emerging market such as Brazil, you tend to see larger inequality and their Gini coefficient is 0 0.50. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.